baby what happened to your head do you mind hey guys what up welcome back to another video today's video is a goldfish video for all my goldfish lovers so really quick this is lemon grab he is my lemon head aranda so i got him and my red cap aranda for free from one of my local fish stores because i bought like a bunch of aquariums from them all at once and they were just like oh here have some free fish while you're at it thank you for your business so that's how they came into my life i've had them for a few years now they grew they're beautiful they're my babies i love them but yeah so this is lemon grab I named him Lemon Grab because, you know, Lemon Head, Aranda, Lemon Grab, you know, like in Adventure Time. Unacceptable condition! Unacceptable! It just, it made sense. So I keep my goldies outside in kiddie pools, and yeah, that works great. I love it. I love all the room they have. I love that they get sunlight. It's just a great environment and they thrive really well out there so yeah um everything was going fine until recently so one morning i went out there to check up on them i wanted to know how they spent their nights like did they have any nightmares did they dream with me okay so i just went out there to check up on them in the morning <laughs> and i find this so I went outside to check on the Goldies and found Lemon Grab with what appeared to be the aftermath of a brain explosion. Like I know Halloween is coming up and he probably wanted to go trick or treating. This is partially my fault, like I've been watching a lot of Z Nation around him so he probably wanted to be a zombie this year for Halloween. But dang Lemon Grab, don't you know there's like special effects makeup? Like you don't actually have to like injure yourself. Just kidding. So lemon grab is an aranda goldfish. Arandas are a type of goldfish known for this bubbly, gummy worm looking thing growing on top of their heads. So this is called a wen. The wen looks like a hundred tiny tumors piling on one on top of the other. I know. You might even find yourself feeling a bit triggered if you have trypophobia. Sorry about that. So the wen is actually skin folds, believe it or not. So it's skin. So what exactly happened here with lemon grab? I don't know. Like, I have absolutely no idea till this day. His wen was ripped apart and there was a piece hanging off. And then he was bloody. Like his wen was bruised and bloody. Which is weird because goldfish wen trimming is a thing. What is goldfish wen trimming? She willikers, well I'm glad you asked. So goldfish wen trimming is depending on the genetics of some arandas. Sometimes their wens grow too much and they become too heavy for the fish to swim with and then they just like can't swim anymore. Other times it just grows too out of control and covers their eyes and blinds the fish and then you know they'd have trouble finding their food. It's just not a good quality of life. Basically a wen trim is like a haircut for them except it's not hair, it's skin. Yeah, you anesthetize the fish and you cut back their wen. The point I'm trying to make with this is I've seen wen trim videos. I don't know why I've seen so many of them. Like they're just so interesting to me for some reason. <laughs> but in those videos of people cutting into their fish wen, there's no blood. And remember, there shouldn't be because it's just skin. But my lemon grab was bleeding from his wen wounds. I don't know why. Like there's literally videos of people cutting into their fish wens and there's not one single drop of blood or bruising or anything. And then there's my fish with his all bloody. Like how? So that was really weird. And this happened overnight. So it's not like this developed over the course of several days. So first thing I did for him, you know, after I freaked out and everything, <laughs> I got him into a hospital tank. But first I placed them in a recycled butter tub. <laughs> Most people I know store like their beans and stuff in these, but I save them for transporting and treating fish. So I placed them in there and I added some meth blue and salt. So it was a dip. Fish dips will remove external bacteria, which is great. You know, if we can avoid him bringing anything bad into the hospital tank, that's great. Sick or injured fish become stressed and then that causes their immune system to crash. Then certain bacteria or 
organisms that are not so good but that are naturally present in their environment you know like there's a lot of good bacteria in aquariums and ponds and tubs and stuff but there's also bad stuff in there you know you can't avoid it it's just natural it's just part of their environment no matter how clean and pristine you keep their environment there's always gonna be something bad in their present but a good healthy fish that is strong not like Babette Babette isn't strong <laughs> just kidding you are <laughs> So a good healthy fish is strong and they have a great immune system so anything bad in the water or in their environment has absolutely no effect on them because their bodies can fight it off. However, a sick or injured or stressed fish with a compromised immune system can't do that. And then these bad things present in their environment attack and because they don't have a good immune system to fight off any intruders it takes over their bodies and can kill them so a sick injured stressed fish is an exposed fish so methylene blue is excellent against superficial fungal infections which it did look like some fungus was starting to develop in little lemon grabs head when brain <laughs> Meth blue also increases oxygen circulation. So that's why I decided to go with the meth blue. It's just great. And then I chose to complement with the aquarium salt because it's actually great at reducing stress in comfortable doses, of course. You know, too big of a dose will actually have the opposite effect and will stress out a fish. So, you know, you gotta be careful with the dosing. Aquarium salt can also treat some infections, encourage slime coat production, that helps fish defend themselves against external organisms. Again, it's just great. So I did a quick dip here. You know, I left him here while I got his hospital tank set up. So this is the hospital tank. It's pretty bare. The water looks dirty because I had just done like a really big water change, you know, before adding him in there. Just making sure it's like extra clean in there for him. <laughs> so I also added meth blue and salt in there. So this aquarium is actually a grow out aquarium that I used to grow out like snails and fish fry and stuff. So it was fully cycled before. <laughs> now the thing with adding meds into the water in any aquarium, you're gonna lose the cycle. If you put something in the water to kill bacteria, Bacteria. It's gonna kill harmful bacteria, yes, but it's also gonna kill off good bacteria in your filter that is keeping the cycle in there. So this was no longer a cycled aquarium. So the dip he was in actually had a higher dose of the meth flu because it was a dip. But now that it was gonna be like a treatment over the course of a few days, I dosed the aquarium according to manufacturers instructions so yeah there goes the meth blue and there goes the salt and that was the initial treatment i acclimated him and added him in and that was day one the next day the water wasn't blue anymore now that's perfectly fine but the meth blue is still in there okay it's just hiding you know like a ninja it should be called meth ninja blue <laughs> so my little lemon grab looked good okay like he was active he was swimming around a lot i mean the wen looks pretty much the same and the peas that was left hanging looked like it was gonna fall off soon so that's good you know i thought about cutting it off but i again i didn't want to further stress him out so i figured it would fall off on its own and look like the process was already starting <laughs> so because of his injuries and because we no longer had a cycle here in this aquarium we had to keep his environment as sterile and clean as possible so i was doing water changes every day and then i would doze the new water that i put in there with more meth blue and salt like not the entire volume of water in the aquarium just the new water oh and there he goes he's like so cute and happy looking and that face though <laughs> my favorite thing about orandas is they're like cute 
round like cheeky tumor filled faces <laughs> I, I love this my baby is so cute as far as feeding goes I soaked his pellets with garlic and water so garlic stimulates a fish's appetite they love the taste it also boosts their immune system and has a few other medicinal uses that we're not really gonna get into because there's debates whether some of these are myths or real so yeah like we're not gonna debate about this <laughs> So I usually always soak the pellets before I feed them to my goldfish, you know, because swim bladder problems. So I always soak them in water. Now the only thing I did different here was crush a whole garlic in here and soak the pellets in that water. So he wasn't super into eating at first. As you can see, like that's completely normal with sick, injured fish. When I'm sick, I don't want to eat either. So like, I feel you, lemon grab. I feel you. But once he noticed that garlic in there, he went in. Thank you, garlic. <laughs> I slightly overfed him accidentally, I know. But I was doing so many water changes that it didn't really like matter anyways. And that was the end of day two. So here he is at first, and here he is 24 hours later. Good progress. And then the next morning, I noticed the beginning stages of dropsy. My heart sunk to the floor. Dropsy is the result of kidney failure. Basically, the kidney shuts down and the fish retains fluid. So as the fluid builds up, the fish gets bloated and its scales lift up. So the problem isn't the scales, the problem is internal. So the exact cause of dropsy isn't really known, but it's believed that most commonly, dropsy is the result of an internal bacterial infection. There's other things that can cause dropsy, but dropsy is usually the result of something else. If your fish has dropsy, something else went wrong before the dropsy developed, you know what I mean? And here with lemon grab, a internal bacterial infection may perfect sense you know his defenses were down his immune system was down a internal bacterial infection is very much possible fish with dropsy are usually very unhappy you know they're lethargic they lose their appetite it doesn't look really good it's usually a death sentence so I really didn't want lemongrass to go off of food because once a fish stops eating that's pretty much a good indication that it is dying so i made him some gel food that he loves treating dropsy is usually never successful unfortunately and the fish eventually dies or has to be euthanized the best chance of survival is if dropsy is caught early on the thing is that when dropsy symptoms first start to show the fish is already an organ failure once you see the scales all lifted up and the fish all bloated the kidney has stopped working that's organ failure and it's not like we could do a kidney transplant on a goldfish right can we do that no we can't do it like could you imagine having to put the fish in anti-rejection meds for its entire life and like having a compromised immune system because of the anti-rejection meds what if it rejects like the new organ like i've been watching way too much Grey's anatomy anyways <laughs> If the treatment is successful, the kidney will recover if it's not too far gone. So there is hope. The most common treatment for dropsy is putting the fish in some type of antibiotic. The one I've used before and that I trust and that I've had good results with, not just for dropsy but for other things, is Canaplex. Hashtag not sponsored. <laughs> Canaplex is a broad spectrum antibiotic. Great for treating dropsy, hemorrhagic septicemia, mouth rot, fin rot, cloud eye, like just a nice variety of things. So because I've used the Canaplex before, I was out. Yeah. And unfortunately for me and for lemon grab and just this entire situation, none of my local fish stores had any in stock or anything similar. So I had to go online and get it ASAP. To make things even worse, I remember it was a Saturday. So there, like even if I paid for express overnight shipping, post office doesn't work on Sundays. So I absolutely had to wait till Monday. So that really sucked. So that was two whole days that he was gonna have to like hang on and not die. 
to help him out a little bit i kept up with the water changes and kept the water parameters as pristine as possible so i had to take him out in order to do water changes like comfortably and in depth if i didn't take him out then there was just absolutely no way that i was going to be able to clean as in depth with him in there <laughs> another reason is that the water coming out of the garden hose is actually really hot the heat here is real i had to like freeze water in ziploc bags and then i would float them in there so that it would bring the water temperature down so after the water temperature was down as close as possible to room temp here inside the house then i would still like float him up there for a few minutes so that he would acclimate just in case and then add him in this was every day you know for a fish with drop seed that isn't currently on the meds that he needs to get better he was still pretty active i'm so proud of him oh and i forgot to say that by this point he was no longer getting meth blue and salt dosed in his hospital tank they had already served their purpose and meth blue and the salt would just not do absolutely anything for drop seed so no reason to have him in there and the next day okay here we go again with the water change After the water change, I kind of just like examined him. Unfortunately, the dropsy had definitely progressed. His wen looked a bajillion times better. So that's really good. But his scales were even more lifted. That meant that he was more bloated, which meant his kidney was more damaged and was failing more. But thankfully, the Canaflex was going to be arriving the next day. And he was still really active. Other than the lifted scales, you would never know something was wrong. He didn't look miserable. So I didn't see a reason to give up and not give him a fighting chance. Finally, it came. Hey, baby lemon grab. We're gonna make you all better now. You've held on great till now, okay? Let mommy step in and take care of it. I've got you. So you administer the Canaplex by either dosing it in the aquarium or dosing their food. But seeing how progressed the dropsy was getting and you know, the days that I lost of catching it early and uh, increasing the chances of lemon grafts arriving, I wasn't gonna take any chances. So I did both. I dosed the aquarium, and then I also made some gel food for a little lemon grab. And I added the Canaflex in there. And this is him getting his first dose. He went for it right away. He's such a fatty. <laughs> and that was the end of that day. So no significant difference the next day, or at least it appeared so. But I actually did a side-by-side -side comparison of uh, 24 hours in between. So, and here it was really clear. The Canaflex was working. There was improvement. And then here's the comparison from day one with his brain all like... And then here's the current one in that point of time. His when looked really good. The redness had gone down a lot. The piece that was hanging fell off, it healed. It's progressing really nicely. So I kept up with the pristine water conditions, I kept up with the water changes, I would dose the new water that I was replacing, I kept feeding him the medicated fish food. I just kept doing what I was already doing and that was already working. And here's a recent clip of Lemon Grab now. Yay! He's pretty much back to normal. His scales are back down, he's not bloated, like he's round and like chubby, but that's just how he is, okay? Okay. but it's not the dropsy anymore which means that his kidney recovered and was doing again what it was supposed to be doing his when i mean brain <laughs> completely healed by the way every time i say brain you guys know i'm kidding right i clarified that it was a win so yeah it was completely healed he was healed he's back 
So he's still in here in his hospital tank because honestly, I'm feeling a bit paranoid about adding him out there again with the rest of the Goldies because I still don't know what caused the initial trauma. So I can't help prevent it and keeping it from happening again if I don't even know what caused it to begin with. All my other Goldies are fine. I never had any issues with them even after the incident. Like they even have babies now. Yes, my goldfish had babies. <laughs> So yeah, they're doing great and I'm nervous about adding him back out there, but you know, I think it's time. So I will have to do that soon. So yeah, this is it. This is the story with Lemon Grab. Like he almost died on me. Like how dare he? Lemon Grab, you're not allowed to go anywhere. Ugh, the nerve on him. So really quick before I go, I want to tell you guys about this awesome, awesome, awesome awesome did i say it was awesome because it's awesome this awesome freshwater and saltwater aquarium show it's everything i love in one event check out a sneak peek a brand new aquarium festival is coming to the city of chicago this summer and it's called aquashella good morning chicago i really don't know how to describe it but it feels like you're entering an alternate these underwater guys universe. are displaying freshwater and saltwater aquariums in unison with art so apparently, the way this works is everyone who attends the event gets a special pair of UV glasses. And when you put them on, they reveal all the fluorescent colors in the aquatic animals and art. How exciting does that look? This event speaks to me in a spiritual level. It's everything I am. So the creators of this festival have reached out to me and have invited me to attend. Like they've been super nice. They even like offered to fly me out and everything. <laughs> so sweet. And one of them is actually a YouTuber. I haven't confirmed if I'm gonna be able to attend yet because I do have a very unpredictable lifestyle. So I can't assure whether or not I'm gonna be there, but you need to be there. If you live in Chicago, then you have absolutely no excuse to not go and if you don't live in chicago then it's a perfect opportunity for a road trip grab your best buddies and drive out there and eat some really good pizza while you're there they have good pizza <laughs> so the convention is from august 18th to the 19th so it's a two-day event that you don't want to miss it's gonna be awesome make sure you get your tickets right now the link will also be down below and who knows i might pop in and see you guys there <laughs> So that was it for today's video. So if you haven't yet subscribed to this channel, then please go ahead and do that. And make sure that you have your notifications turned on so that you never ever miss any of my future videos. If you enjoyed the video or learned something, then go ahead and give this video a big fat thumbs up. And let me know down below if you've ever had to treat any of your fish. Let me know what it was and how it went. That is it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will talk to you guys in the next video say bye you guys they're like sleeping <laughs> they both just like gave up oh i woke them up oh hey honey you woke up say bye to the people say bye you look so weird naked and her all cute with her diaper <laughs> hashtag nude life bye you guys say bye babette bye say bye odette bye say bye leia bye